Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks interesting to you, please carry on and watch the video. And also, just one more thing before we go. Please, if you enjoy the video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. But with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting up Mr. Ra's Nisi here, our sort of undead snake man. And to do this, to give that undead effect, we're going to use some Brackarth flesh to start off with his skin tone, which is a very um, greyish skin tone. So I hope it's going to really bring out that undead sort of snake man appearance anyway. I mean, he's not completely undead, but we want that really sort of undead look to him, really unnatural. And of course, I've given him a Zenithal Highlight Prime as well, so that's black from the bottom and white from above so we can really see those uh, highlights and shadows as we're painting along here and you can see that I've also thinned my paints down quite a bit so I can take um, note of where those highlights and stuff should be as I'm painting as well and just going over with two thin coats as well and getting into all those little nooks and crannies too with Raz Nisi he has a lot of um, ornamental jewelry on him as well so we want to make sure we get in between those two Then once we have that complete, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with a wash and we're going to use some Brightland Flesh Shade to do this. And what we're going to be doing of course is placing the wash over all of the skin areas. Of course, now this is going to bring some um, reddish tones back in and really sort of liven them back up. But we're going to be waiting for that to dry and then coming with the highlight step to really um, bring that sort of un dead sort of un well not really undead but unnatural appearance back into them anyway so we just want to be giving a good overall wash this and making sure that we keep those washes in the recesses then once we have that wash complete what we're going to do coming back in again with our Rakath flesh which again is that sort of really pale grayish tone and we want to come back in with the highlights and you can see i switched to a finer tip brush to do this and we want to be giving those highlights a good overall coverage a little bit more than what i usually do i sort of usually just go for the top so i'm going to be giving um a little bit more of a coat I want to bring back that sort of unnaturally undead sort of look so I'm going over and really bring those out I'll tell you after you want to do here if you want to make a more lively skin of course you want to do these highlights just a little bit less but if you want to give them that sort of unnaturally undead sort of appearance then you want to go a little bit stronger like I am here and really picking up those highlights to bring that uh, grayish tone back into his skin and it's just a matter of going all over those areas that we were looking at with our Xenothor Prime to see those areas where we want to roughly pick out. Okay, now we've got that skin complete. What we're going to do now is coming in with some Magos Purple, which is a contrast paint. I'm going to get a little bit of effects to his skin here. He has sort of um, like scabs and sores and boils over his skin. Like I said, he's got that very unnatural. Uh, undead appearance um, because of the nature of the story that he has in uh, Tomb of Annihilation and he has these all nicely picked out I think Magos Pepper is going to be a great contrast with the uh, colors that we have on here and really give it something interesting to look at in this skin so it's another little added extra effect to really help um, bring some interest to the model in there as well and you can see that he's got some nasty little areas on him so it's just a matter of going around the model and picking out the ones that you can see being very careful of course that we don't let our uh, contrast paint go everywhere we want to be very controlled with it so you only use a little on your brush at a time Okay, so now we have his skin completely finished. We're going to come in now with the Griff Hound Orange, and this is going to be for the snake portion of him. So this Griff Hound Orange is going to really help give a nice overall vibrant color to all his scales because uh, I'm following the artwork uh, pretty closely here to his uh, official artwork he has, and he has very sort of um, orange scales. So it's going to be a great color to match with that. It's very, very similar. So of course, and then what we want to do, since it is a contrast paint, we get to take full effect of that Xenothor Highlight Prime with those highlights and shadows built in. And it's just a matter of coming in and layering them all up nice and carefully. So as you can see, I'm doing it all on the top sort of scales. I'm avoiding the ones on his uh, center of uh, the belly of the snake, I guess, portion. They want, and I'm just going to be focusing on more those back scales and everything like that. So just going around, and of course, as we're doing it, being 
mindful that we want to make sure all that contrast paint goes into all the little nooks and crannies too as we're going along. Then once we have all those back scales picked out, what we're going to do is coming in with some khaki now. I'm going to be using this for like the belly scales. Now I'm not sure exactly if that's how you say it, but I'm going to be focusing on ones mainly on the front here with a khaki colour. Separate them out, give a visual difference so you can tell where the sort of bottom of the snake and the top part of the snake is and really make it stand out especially from a distance too it's going to really stand out from a distance having the two colours there and as you can see I didn't quite get the contrast paint to just stay on those areas I wanted to but it's okay because we're coming in with this colour now so we can tidy it up and just get it onto those areas where we want it to but we want to make sure that we do this step after so we can tidy up with this colour rather than trying to tidy up with the contrast paint it would be very very difficult to do it the other way around then once we've got those parts of the scales painted up, what we're going to do now is come in with some black grey. And we're going to be using this for his belt, which looks like a bunch of like uh, ropes slash other little belts all tied together in this one sort of giant mass around the centre of his chest. That were our chest meets our snake half anyway. And we want to be giving that a good overall coat with our uh, black grey here. And of course we want to get those little bits that are dangling around the side. So practicing a little bit of brush control here because we don't want to get any of that really dark paint on those bright colours we've just applied. So using the edge of your brush is what you sort of want to be doing here. Rather than a direct tip, it's very easy to sort of slip off, off and actually hit somewhere we don't want to with the tip. So you just come on with the side and then slowly pick them out as you're... Uh, doing the long strands that are dangling beside him there and it's going to really help uh, set those parts as two separate areas as well which is I know what you probably don't want to do you want to make it a full sort of look um, the same with when you're doing this so it looks like it's all combined together but I think having that nice eye-catching black piece in the middle separating out is going to really help give that visual distinct area that this is an unnatural person Okay, so once we have that belt area complete, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some orange fire. And this is going to be one of those nice, long, tedious processes of a paint job. And what I'm going to do here is go along and pick out the very edges of each individual scale as we're going down the back of his snake-like body. And really just picking out pretty much like the bottom section, the parts that are naturally hitting the sun. And this nice, bright, fiery orange is going to really give us a nice impacting shocking sort of um, visual highlights from a distance to really help make this piece stand out especially from a distance on the table so we want to start this arduous process now and really get into all of those pieces and make sure we go around all around that snake body Okay, then once we've completed all of that, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some Agrax Earthshade, and this is a brown wash, and what we're going to be doing is pretty much ruining everything we just did here by covering everything in a complete wash, and you're going to say to me, why, why when we just spent all that time coming over it, we're going to go in with the wash and cover all of that up, but what I'm doing here is uh, our, of course if we're buying our wash correctly anyway you'll still be able to see the difference in the transitions from those highlights we placed on there to the original colors on the piece but as well as that too i'm going to be coming in with some more highlight layers and just add into higher points of the tip so we get a lot of color variation once this wash is completely dry i know it's going to be a little bit um painful I mean you may not want to apply this the contrast paint and the highlights may be just enough for you but I want to add in that little bit extra depth to the whole piece then once that wash is completely dry what we're going to do now is come in with some skeleton bone and what we're going to be doing with this is we're going to be using it to apply over those belly scales that I was talking about and we're doing the exact same sort of highlighting layer that we did with the back scales we did just before and as you can see too when this wash is completely dry that you can still see the difference in the transitions between those highlights we placed on those back scales and the original colour with our contrast paint too. Then once we have those belly scales complete, it's time to come back in with our fiery orange and redo that step we did just before 
and this time of course we're applying it even to the finer edges rather than uh, an overall highlight what we did before just to really pop out everything again now remember like I said you could easily skip over this step if you wanted to and um, have it the way it is because you can still tell the difference between those highlights and the shadows that we had here when we applied our wash but you can see while I'm applying this wash it's onto those very finest points it's really going to make it stand out and give that nice visual eye-catching interest especially from a distance And then with that complete we are done with the scale so no need to worry about picking out each individual scale and then what we've done is we're coming in with some basalt grey here and what I'm going to be doing is picking out all the little raised edges of all that uh, rope and belts and stuff that he has tied around his waist separating those two areas and it's just a matter of coming in and as you can see I'm using the side of my brush rather than the tip to really pick out a lot of those edges all at once and it's a lot easier way to pick out very sharp and hard points to reach out with a brush then once we have that complete what we're going to be doing is we're going to come in with some of the wrappings he has around him I'm going to be using some deck tan to do this and I'm just going to go around and pick out all the wrappings around his body because uh, in the law I believe with Mr. Ryzen you see here he is sort of this undead abomination who's sort of falling apart and he has all these scabs and sores all over and he's trying to cover them up because his body's sort of like peeling away and falling away so we want to try to uh, get those nice wrappings that he's holding himself together with and I know they're going to look a little bit clean here but we're going to dirty them up eventually as well Then once we've got those wrappings picked out, what we're going to do is come in with some Sarah from Sepia. And this is where I said we want to dirty those back up and make them look like their oldish bandages. And of course like their natural bandages, because like, as you can tell, that deck tan was sort of getting lost a little bit in there with that bright colour with those bright skin tones we have on him as well. So giving them an overwash, being very, very careful that we don't get it anywhere we don't want to. So being uh, controlled with your brush, using a little bit of wash at a time as we're going around picking out all those wrappings. Okay, now that we've got that wash completely dry and dirty up, we're going to come back in with our highlight colour again, which is going to be our deck tan once more, and we're just going to come around and pick out all those raised areas on the bandages, and bring the highlights back up so where those sun would naturally catch on the piece, and you can see as well that it's nicely sculpted in there, so it's not too hard to see where we need to pick out those highlights. So it's just a matter of going around the model and picking out all the highlights and all the wrappings. Okay, so now we've got that complete, what we're going to be doing is moving on to his sword now. And we're going to be using some rough iron to start off with here. I want to give him a nice, really dark, sort of black sword. And really um, help emphasize that fire that he's got coming off it. So I'm avoiding the um, usual sort of silver here and going with this nice, dark, rough iron sword. And of course, as you can see, I'm just painting the bottom of the blade. Not that top, because we're going to be painting fire on top of that. So there's no point in painting that top. So just going from sort of the middle to the bottom there giving it a nice overall good coat then once we have that blade picked out we're going to come in now with some greedy gold and what we're going to be doing is picking out all of his ornamental jewelry he has on he has this nice sort of uh, belt buckle on and this is a mass of uh, rope and belts and stuff that he has on him as well as this is nice big ornamental necklace that he has on him as well as that he also has some uh, golden braces and we want to be painting up the hilt and the pommel of the sword as well with the nice gold since he lives uh, comes from this sort of ancient land with all this gold ornamentation and he's very sort of like uh, how would you say like he thinks highly of himself and thinks of him as this godly like figure so he shows himself off with all this gold ornate jewelry so we want to be of course using that nice shiny gold to pick that out and this is uh, greedy gold so it's a nice deep gold too so it's going to really help um, give that authentic gold look then once we've blinged them all out now what we're going to do is we're going to give all of that gold a wash and what we're going to do of course is being very careful and controlled with our wash like we've been in the last few stages and applying just a little bit to our brush and carefully placing it over those areas to really deepen that gold up and really warm it up and give it that nice rich gold appearance we're going for that nice deep rich gold and 
as you can see, there's a lot of little areas, so being very, very careful as we're applying this. Then once we have that complete, we're going to do the fire on the sword, and we're starting off with flat yellow for this. And we're going to be giving this a good overall coat, as well as that too. I should mention that I also want to pick out the eye on Ra's Nisi here with the yellow. And you can see I've got a very, very fine tip on here, and just carefully dotting that eye in. It's going to be very, very hard to see just slightly sculpted in there but totally up to you if you want to paint that in there i want to get that little visual interest and then uh, like i said we want to be painting up the fire so we're giving a good overall coat here now this is going to take a few coats because as you know yellow is notoriously sort of thin paint so it takes a little while to build up that color especially if you want a nice really really rich color as well great if you want it for just sort of a nice thin overcoat but i'm going for that nice rich color and i'm sort of just going down to that halfway mark being very very careful that we don't go too far so the whole blade is on fire we want just the top of that blade to be on fire okay so then while we've got that painted on we're going to come in now with some orange fire now one thing that i'm uh, doing a little bit different is while this paint is wet i'm applying this uh orange they're trying to get a sort of mixture of paint get that transition in there i'm definitely not great at this technique so there may be people out there who can do this a lot better than me but i'm trying to get that sort of mixing of the colors on the paint as it's wet uh, wet blending i believe it's called i'm not great at this technique but uh, we want to get that general gist here so this is how i'm going to try and do it then once we have that color down we're going to come in with some dragon red and of course this is going to be for the tips of the fire now when we're painting the fire we want the red color to be always sort of at the top because the flame goes red when it's starting to get colder and as it's uh, where it's hotter is where the color is brighter so we want to try and keep those transitions in mind as we're painting this up so it should be a nice hot yellow then moving into that warmer sort of orange and then that cooler red which is a bit weird to say when you're painting up fire but that's how you get a sort of real looking fire color as you're painting it up so just being aware and since we've only got half a blade to work with it's very very fine work so just wiggle it back and forth until you get it to a place where you're happy with it and with that we will also be painting up just some of the ornamental gems that we have on Ra's Nisi here as you can see he's got a lot of that nice gold uh, decoration he also has a lot of very small little gems i'm only picking those out with the red as well so don't forget to do that too while you're painting those up and then with that we have Ra's Nisi complete so let's move on to some of those glamour shots to see how it came out And with all that complete, we have finally finished painting up Ra's Nisi from the Dungeons and Dragons miniature range by Gale Force 9. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. Whether you want to follow along with what I did here, or you just want to use this video as some inspiration of painting up your own miniatures. But with all that said, guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.